asking about the the lanterns on the yeah, on the side how do you make those, up? those are uh, plexiglass rod turned on a lathe uh, you turn the shape then you drill little holes in them and put uh, brass or copper wire oh, yeah. uh, formed yeah. around paint them and uh, it looks like a lantern and how about the fire hose fire hose is made out of the old style toothpaste tubes well, I was about to interview Ray about his boat, but it seems that Norm's taking all the questions for me, so let's listen in on that. The winch is an old uh, uh, an old fishing reel. Uh, you use a spool and you use the spooling gear. Uh, it's a lot of copper plate, and brass plate, brass tubing. It's all scratch built. The wood was uh, scrapped from the reel boat. That's what I do for a living is I repair boats. So I took the scrap wood from the reel boat and made the model of it. So it's all yellow cedar hull with all the ribs and everything. And then the cap rails are purple heart, just like on the real one. Yeah, you got your floats here, and then another one, you got life rings. Yeah, well, the, the floats were actually toy beads that I, uh, cut all apart but they're made out of polyurethane which is the same as the real floats yes. and the same colors what does the numbers represent the numbers are represent uh, the same number as the fishing the license. license oh yeah right all the boats put their their uh, fishing license number on it they can identify their floats if somebody else steals them too yeah you got all those nice little details down there different ropes and whatnot i guess eh? yeah well i'm following the the uh, photographs i took of the real boat i mean they had so much stuff on this thing it's incredible and you got the reel to go in the back I haven't made the I haven't made the drum yet. I'm gonna make a, a radio-controlled uh, power skiff to go on the back too, so I'll be able to make a, a set with it. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Okay, we have Ulrich Gaeta here with the Dire Straits tugboat. And this is a pretty nice model, and it looks like you put a lot of work into it. What can you tell us about it? Well, I uh, started it in 1984. And it's still not finished, but uh, I have done a lot of work on it. It's mostly sketch built. I pulled the hull out of a kit, and it's uh, three quarters of the hull. I pulled a foot out of the middle of it because it was too, uh, too narrow and long, and I wanted something a little squatter. And then just built the rest of it as you see. Everything above the waterline scratch. Everything built. above the waterline scratch. A lot of little bits that are uh, pieces of other things like uh, copper tubing and parts of uh, fire extinguishers and things like that. Anywhere I could find something that looked like the right thing when it was small, I put it on here. That's typical of a lot of guys who build stuff. Their wife suddenly is missing something. Yeah. Now the, uh, the, the superstructure is all plywood and then there's uh, there's uh, copper or uh, brass wire, plastic bits. And, uh, what about the electronics inside? Electrics, well, it is uh, it is an old model, so I've actually uh, built it so that it, it would uh, operate. This is the fire monitor which actually operates all so so all the lights go on and are connected through the uh, the, the connector here then we have a, a multi switch which doesn't work as well as it used to but uh, basically it turns oh you got a hammer to hit the switch hammer hits the switch that runs the monitor this uh, runs the anchor winch. So as I suspected, if there was a wife involved here, she'd probably be missing the top of her juice container. This is true. This is a, a juice container, the one where you, uh, you have a little yeah, plunger rubber, that rubber makes rubber the orange juice. <laughs> That's right. Didn't take me long to find that in the cupboard. So I built the uh, fire buckets out of, uh, out of thimbles, 
and it's also the switch that actuates the light over the chart table in the, uh, in the wheelhouse. Well, from the looks of this model, there is a lot of stuff you can find around your own home to actually make a detailed piece of work like this. Thank you very much for showing us this today, Elric. Thank you. Well, that's it for this week's episode of RCTV. On next week's episode, we have a cool scale heli and a fun float from Burnaby, BC. And we're heading out to Winnipeg to see some kids eat up some dirt with some off-road racing. See you next week, folks. RCTV, your radio-controlled authority, has been brought to you in part by Eliminator RC, your one-stop hobby shop. RC Pit Stop, bringing the best of RC to BC. And John's Hobbies, Toronto's local hobby store.